welcome back. It is Monday. I am Mr. Sosatris, and this week I'm doing a review of S.A. Chakravarti's Dave Abad trilogy. This, uh, the first book came out a couple of years ago, I think four years now, so a lot of people have probably already read this. I'm a little bit uh, behind the curve here, but if you have not yet read this, this review is for, is for you. If you have read it and loved it, um, please jump into the comments because I want to talk about it with other people. Um, this trilogy is probably one of my favorite fantasy things that I've read since the Greenbone Saga. It is so good. It's the perfect mix of a great fantasy world, wonderful characters that you really care about, deep lore that's really interesting to dig into, and it's just really competently written and satisfyingly concluded. And um, I just finished reading the last book uh, last night, and I just loved it, and so I wanted to come on here and rant about it to you all. And Circe's here too, and she loved it. Yes, I know. So a brief synopsis, as best as I can. Uh, it tells the story of Nari, um, a human woman living in 18th century Cairo, and um, she accidentally summons a djinn named Dara, uh, who realizes that she has sort of something about her that makes her a little bit more different. And so he brings her to this magical city of Devabad, which is hidden from human eyes, and she gets pulled into the the complex politics of what's going on um, in that city. There's a king who's sort of ruling with a very firm hand and he's trying to keep all the different tribes in line and he feels like he's slipping into being a tyrant and uh, there's all that kind of stuff. And then behind all this, there's a lot of really complex rules that govern kind of the use of magic in this world that was set down by events in the past. Um, and there's other um, elemental beings who are sort of in the background, maybe controlling things, maybe not. Um, there's a lot of questions kind of beneath the surface. So as you go along, you kind of uncover the truth of how the world works, what's going on, who's what, and um, it's just terrific. Um, the setting is inspired by the mythologies and folklore of um, a number of Middle Eastern nations um, and cultures. Um, the whole story feels like something conjured up by Scheherazade herself, but it's never orientalist or um, resorting to stereotypes or anything like that. Um, the, the author knows what she's doing. She is Muslim um, and she really knows what she's doing. She kind of writes everything with a really deft hand and um, it just feels real and tangible um, in um, just delightful ways. Um, and I just love this. I know, baby. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now she's knocking over things. Um, so I have five criteria uh, for my reviews. And so I'm going to go through them now. The first criterion on here is, do the characters feel like real people? Um, and the answer to that is absolutely yes. Um, everyone has kind of a gray morality to them. There's very few characters that are like pure evil or perfectly good. Everyone kind of has their own agenda. Everyone is trying to stay alive. Um, everyone is trying to further their own interests. Um, and doing that requires that sometimes people do bad things. And sometimes what they do is justified, sometimes what they do is not justified, and it really makes for uh, just a complex cast of characters that really feels real. It's not, there's no like simplistic shadowy dark lord lurking on a mountaintop and that's kind of the, the thing. It's like everyone has reasons for what they're doing and uh, you know, goals that they want and some are honorable and some are evil and you just kind of go along the journey with them. So yes, absolutely. The characters feel very real and compelling. Next question is, did the writing style draw you in? This is the second book in the series. And yes, again, it's a yes. The prose is descriptive and elegant. Um, the dialogue is really well crafted, but it's never self-indulgent. There's some fantasy writers who are so in love with sort of the world they created 
and the rules behind the world and the aesthetic of their world that they kind of spend too much time dwelling on all of that to kind of show off to the reader like hey look at this amazing world I've created isn't it cool um, this book never does that it's really descriptive and gorgeous and feels very real but it everything is always in service of character and plot so things move along really well and um, it's uh, just the writing style is really engaging it kind of pulls you in the first hundred pages of the first book I raced through I could not put it down it just it gets you invested right away and it's so so good all right next question is did the plot move at an appropriate pace this is the third book in the series um and I say absolutely I really really liked how well this was paced even though like the third book is quite large um it still moved along really well um, at the beginning of the second book, the pace slows down a bit, but it doesn't slow down in terms of like not getting across what it wants to do because the second book, everyone is sort of recovering from what happened in the first book and reorienting themselves and trying to figure out what their next plan of action is. And so, um, that's the only time where I felt like the pace slowed, but it, it didn't hurt anything. It still felt like it really fit with the book um, and even the third one this is a huge book and so much stuff happens in this one um, there you'd think there would be like stretches where like nothing would happen or we'd be waiting for things to happen um, you know like waiting for chess pieces to get into place and you never see that it it flows along really well um, and it just keeps you engaged so the pacing of this whole series is just pitch perfect I really really enjoyed it. My fourth question is, uh, were you still thinking about it after you finished it? And um, yes, absolutely. I <laughs> I just started reading, um, this is just the dust jacket, but it's The River of Silver, which is the, the short story collection, which kind of interweaves throughout the whole thing. And so I'm reading that now. Um, and um, I take the, the dust jacket off because the bag lives in my backpack because I read on the bus. And I don't want it bouncing around because, like, the paper dust jackets just get crumpled and shredded if they're in there. So um, I take the, the dust jacket off. I don't know. Some people might think that's a monster. Anyways, um, was, was I still thinking about it? Yes, absolutely. Um, one thing that I really like about this series is that it takes some elements of, like, YA fantasy that are sort of the most engaging. Things like action-adventure, um, you know, quippy dialogue, really great monster design, um fun kind of um I don't know just a fun kind of feel to it um and then transports it into an adult fantasy novel this is not YA it is an adult novel but it allows itself to have fun um if you're a video gamer and you are and you love things like you know Dragon Age or Baldur's Gate it's that kind of thing where it's like it's not afraid to get really dark um and complex um but it's also, it, it, it's allowed to be funny, and it's allowed to be joyous, and it's allowed to be cool. Even when it gets really dark, and uh, there's some terrifying stuff that happens, it's still, um, it's just, it's just fun. And it doesn't dwell on things just for the sake of shock value. There's nothing like that. When something awful happens, it feels earned, and it really has a good impact. So just, it's it's delightful. Um, this is not grim dark or anything like that, uh, but it's really well plotted and um, I really, really enjoyed the whole experience. And then finally, um, the last one is, do you want to read it again? And yes, absolutely. Now that I've finished it in physical form, I want to get all these in audiobook and go through them in audio in the future. And then after that, I'll probably read it again because the whole thing was just so much fun and the lore is complex enough. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff and there's like foreshadowing and and uh, all kinds of stuff that you won't pick up the first time. So this is definitely a series that rewards rereading and I cannot wait to go through this again in the future. Yes, I know the cat loves it too. Um, but overall, the series was a ton of fun. I feel like I'm just like gushing needlessly at this point. Um, but I don't know, the, I really needed a good fantasy series to just kind of drag me in there was a couple that I've read 
in the past that were really well regarded and really popular and they just never grabbed me for whatever reason and I just couldn't get into it. Maybe it's just because I read it at the wrong time. That's sometimes what happens. So it may not be that the books were bad in any way. It just wasn't, you know, what I was in the mood for at the time. But this one, it just, everything was firing in all cylinders. It clicked with exactly what I was looking for at the time. And um, I really, really enjoyed it. So don't feel overwhelmed because it's, it's long. Um, just tell yourself it's not as long as, a, as the Stormlight Archive, um, but it's just, it's a ton of fun. It's a great read. The characters are wonderful. And this is a, a, a series that I really want there to be like an online fandom for, because I need like fan art and I want fan cast for this. And I want this. I don't know if I really want this to ever be turned into like a movie or a TV series just because it's perfect the way it is. And it, you know, even if they do a really good job, it'll always be like kind of as good. Um, but you know, it's incredible. Loved it. Would definitely recommend it. And with that, I will let you go. I will see you next week. And in the meantime, happy reading. Bye.